Hello everybody, Roger Sherman from EcoCentral Solar with another update on important aspects of grid-tied solar. Today we're talking about Enlighten, which is Enphase's monitoring system. And unlike many other uh, monitoring systems from other manufacturers, Enphase um, gives you the added benefit of showing your consumption as well as your solar production. So it's, it's, it's a really great system. However, they've updated it recently and I've had quite a few uh, customers contact us to find out how it all works. So let's jump right in. Uh, this is the new home screen and it looks unfortunately like they let the engineers loose on this system. Um, because they've definitely made it more complicated. So let me let me take you through it. In the middle is a very important piece of data, which is um, how much you've consumed. Now remember, monitoring runs from midnight to midnight. So in this particular case, um, as shown at this time of day, this customer has consumed 10.16 kilowatt hours, of which 2.82 has come from solar and 8.61 has come from the grid. So if we look at the net result of this, um, they have imported um, 7.34 kilowatt hours as of uh, today. Interestingly enough though, they have also exported, not very much, but uh, 1.27 kilowatt hours has been exported. Um, at the top we see also that the latest power is 1.6 which is the peak and the reason for that is I'm doing this recording in, in the morning so the sun is still uh, rising and coming up to peak which happens towards the middle of the day. The other thing that you'll find on this is um, there is a status and we've got a couple of messages there, which I will show you right now. Um, and we've also got the current weather, which is sunny 29 degrees. So I'm just going to click on, um, on the status, um, which are our messages from Enphase. Uh, the first is our phone service provider is currently experiencing a global outage. So this is where um, Enphase customer service share messages. They occasionally have problems with monitoring. In this case, they've got a problem with their phone system. And also a general message below that, which says weather events can impact the production of your solar array, whether it's heavy rain, snow or shading, it will reduce energy harvest of your panels. Um, so if your system is underperforming, double check the weather before you create a report. So we're gonna get rid of that message because obviously we've now read it. Um, and we're gonna come back to the status, um, which is where we started. Now, what you'll notice is along the bottom menu we have uh, four icons. We have status, energy, array, and menu. And I'm going to go straight uh, to energy. And once we go into energy, you'll also notice that across the top, we can look at this by the day, the week, the month, the year, and the lifetime of the system. Now, what I usually explain to people is that if we look at a single day, it's a bit like taking a photograph, whereas if we look at longer periods, a month, a year, a lifetime, etc., it's more like looking at a video. Um, and again, they've added in this information, which sort of completes the picture. Now, I think I know why they did this, and that is before, where they only had what you'd used and what you'd produced, it didn't tally with what was showing on the CFE bidirectional meter. Because remember, the bidirectional meter, and we've got another video covering this, is basically going to measure two things. It's going to measure what you've imported from the grid, which is reading one, and it's going to measure what you've exported from the grid. So let's look at this specific example. Since midnight, okay, this customer's consumed 10.16 kilowatt hours, and the panels have produced 2.8. So Basically, you'd have seen a consumption of 10 and a production of 2.8. But how was that reflected on the CFE meter? Well, what's been reflected is we've imported 7.34. So reading one on the meter has advanced by seven kilowatt hours. And reading two has, has, um, has advanced by only one kilowatt hours because we've exported 1.2, even though we've produced nearly three kilowatt hours. So this is a common, common misconception is that people think 
that um, reading number two on the CFE meter is a solar production, it is not the same. So let's go at a slightly longer view, and we're going to look now at the whole uh, month. So we're looking at January 2020 here. Now, again, uh, this customer has used 312 kilowatt hours, almost 313, and they've produced just shy of 161. So let's look at these numbers. Basically, we have imported from the grid 253, okay? So um, we've, reading one is advanced by 253 kilowatt hours, and reading number two has, um, has gone up by 101. That's not the same as the 161 we've produced, but we have a net difference, which is the net imported of 152. Okay, so the difference between reading one and reading two on this meter in January has been 152 kilowatt hours, which is kind of on track to keep us below uh, the DAC level. Now, underneath, you'll see that they've shown all of this in a, in a graphical uh, format, with orange being consumption, it's always below the line, because that's sort of negative, and blue being positive, which is the solar production. Now, what you'll also notice is at the bottom here, we can toggle um, the information on and off. So if we only want to see what we've been producing, we just toggle off um, the consumption um, graphic. Um, we can toggle that back on, and we can add another layer um, of information, which is what's been imported or exported. But as you can see, it makes the graph very busy. So most of the time we recommend that that's toggled off or we toggle off everything except that. So here we can see in the two shades of gray, um, yes, we've been exporting, but we've also been importing in a 24 hour period because obviously we don't necessarily consume all the solar that we've been uh, making. So let's just go back to how it was with blue at the top, solar production and orange at the bottom. And um, so in January, for example, the month view and the year view um, will basically be the same. The only thing, the only difference is how the graph is shown because the graph is showing for the, for the whole year and for the month of January. Whereas when we go to the month view, um, it is showing us by the day. Okay, if we were to go to lifetime, in this particular case, this client has had their system since sometime in 2018. Um, so we've got 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, and, and it's pretty interesting. Um, and in fact, let's go to a full year. Let's go uh, back to the year and let's go, let's toggle it back with the back and forward arrows to a full year. So what happened with this client in 2019? Well, they consumed nine megawatts. So a megawatt is a thousand kilowatts. So basically they consumed 9,060 kilowatt hours, of which um, just over half was from their solar. So they produced 4,980. And again, be careful to note megawatts versus kilowatts and remember that a megawatt is a thousand kilowatt hours. So if we look at the whole year they produced 4.98, they consumed nine, so they imported seven and they exported three. That means there was a net use from CFE in 12 months of 4,080 kilowatt hours, okay? So if we were to take that figure, 4,080, and divide it by 365 days in the year, they've been using about 11 kilowatt hours a day from CFE um, when you, you take into account the entire year. Now that's very good because the limit before you jump up into the DAC rate is 13.3. So this customer has managed to not only save a bunch of money, um, but they have also remained below uh, the DAC level, okay? So um, really, really impressive, all right? Now, I'm now going to use the menu at the bottom, um, our four icon status energy array menu, and I'm going to hit array. 
So here we are looking at the array, which basically means at panel level. And this is one of the massive benefits of the end phase system is not only each panel is operating separately, so therefore we are um, maximizing the harvest of the energy, but also we can uh, monitor the performance of each panel as, um, as an entity. Now, one thing which you'll notice here is uh, this is a year view. And you'll notice there is a minor, minor variation between the best performing panel, in this case, 538 kilowatt hours, and the worst performing panel, which is 505. Now, there's a reason for this, and this is one of the reasons in this particular install that we insisted on using microinverters, because we knew, um, because of the complexities of their roof, there were some shading issues. Um, this is totally fine. If in a year view we saw a massive difference, let's say one panel was only producing about 300 kilowatt hours and the others were producing over 500, then we might want to look at moving that panel or check that somebody hasn't installed something else on the roof like an antenna which has created um, some sort of shading. But if we go to the day view here, we'll now see exactly why that variation occurs because you'll notice the panel on the right has produced 270 watt hours compared to the best panel um, over on the left, which is produced 397. And what, we'll, uh, what we're aware of then is this is a, uh, a shading issue. And if we were to go uh, the day before, though, you'll see again minor, minor variations from panel to panel. Now, this is January, where the, uh, the sun is relatively low, whereas if we again go back to the full year, what we'll see is that balances out through the year and we have a very even amount of production. If you have a very large um, array, you may need to use the plus or minus to zoom in and out and actually see specifics of panels um, because we can, um, if, if there's many, many panels in your array, um, you might not actually see the numbers until you've zoomed in, so just be aware of that. The final thing that I wanted to show you on this is um, all the way to the bottom right, which is menu. So here we are in the menu screen. And quite honestly, you're hardly ever going to want to get into this part of the app. Um, the only two reasons that I can think of would be to change the language or the, uh, the units settings. And how we do that is you'd basically, <coughs> excuse me, go into uh, settings, go into account, and you could change uh, from metric to imperial and you can change the language and then you must, you absolutely must click uh, save changes for that to take effect and also you can decide whether you want um, to have um, newsletters etc. We, we generally recommend that you uh, turn that option off um, because it's a bit uh, tiresome. Um, so back into account, um, oops, it's now going to give us that error message about the phone service being off. Whenever they have that sort of message, it kind of overrides everything else. Um, but the, the, the one thing which is very important here, and it's a really great feature, is called reports. When we go into reports, we can select uh, from a number of reports. We can uh, select daily production, recent production, monthly production, daily consumption, recent consumption, or monthly net energy. Now, when this, when, when this becomes really useful is when you um, want to check your readings against what CFE have given. So if we click daily production, what it allows us to do is actually select the, the start and end date. So let's just for argument's sake, um, say this person wanted to check a bill which ran from uh, let's say the, the, the 22nd of October, so we'll, we'll hit done, and until, um, let's say, the 22nd of December, and we hit done. So that's now going to send us a report of the daily production from October 22nd to December uh, 22nd. If we hit email report, that's exactly what it will do, is it will send us that report. And if you combine that with another report, which would be daily consumption, using the same dates, obviously you can then uh, combine those into one uh, spreadsheet 
and actually see what's going on and compare it with the numbers that were um, on your CFE bill. So really this is for people who are quite technical and uh, really kind of want to get into the nitty gritty of the numbers. Not everyone wants to do that, but if you want to do it, it's in this part um, under menu. Other than that, um, basically you're gonna stick looking at um, status, energy, and array. So that's it for now. Um, this is quite a long video because there's a lot to cover. Hope you've enjoyed it, hope you found it useful. And uh, don't hesitate to contact us if you need anything at all. As always, our Sherman at ecocentra.mx. And um, have a sunny, sunny, solar day.